So thank you very much. I think that we can start the presentation. Um, so we have the chance to have Professor Kovacic yeah. from CIPLAN from uh, Masaryk University in Brno. Um, Professor Kovacic is uh, the head of plasma nanotechnology at the application group. He worked during the last, what, 15, 20 years? 14. 13, 13. years uh, with the different application um, related to <laughs> at atmospheric pressure. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Different application of uh, um, different application of plasma at atmospheric pressure. And today we have the chance to have a presentation. Thank you very much for being here with with us today about different approaches of atmospheric plasma pressure utilization to prepare materials with advanced property for various area of application. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, the, Dr. Filippi, for a very kind introduction. And uh, also, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at first, I would like to express my uh, uh, gratitude to Professor Laroš and also Dr. Filippi for inviting me to spend this week here in Quebec at the Laval University and in the laboratories of Professor Laroš and uh, Dr. Um, Filippi. And as you can see in my title, I would like to tell you or give you also some different uh, examples of possibilities to use atmospheric pressure plasma systems in different areas of applications. As it was uh, told, I came from... Uh, maybe. Was... No, no, but <laughs> it, was <laughs> it worked some. Yeah, okay. no, it's working. Okay. As it was uh, told by who came from Sipland Center, it is a research and development, development center uh, associated with Masaryk University in Brno, in Czech Republic, in Central Europe. As you can see for your imagination on this uh, map, Czech Republic is somewhere here in the center of the Europe, and Brno is located in the south Moravia of Czech Republic, in a distance about 200 kilometers from uh, capital city Prague, about 150 from Bratislava, from the capital city of Slovak Republic, and maybe the same distance is from Vienna. Uh, Masaryk University is the second largest uh, university in Czech Republic. The total number of students is reaching approximately uh, 28,000 students. And uh, yes, as it was told, I am a member of CPLAN Center for 13 years, but in fact, uh, I am working in the area of uh, atmospheric pressure plasma since 2001, so it is about 23 years. I have also a part-time job uh, still at Comenius University in Bratislava at the Faculty of Mathematics, Physics and Informatics, but my main full-time job is at Masaryk University. So this is addition to the introduction on this picture. You can see one of our building of the CPLAN that is located our main plasma chemical laboratory. And uh, very briefly to explain you what is the main vision and also role of CPLAN Center. CPLAN Center, as I told you, is a short name for Research and Development Center for Plasma and uh, Technologies and Nanomaterials. It was founded in 2010, and the main role is, uh, how to say, provide help and also some new technology, medium and small enterprises. Uh, since 2019, CPLAN is a member of large research, uh, or is considered as a large research infrastructure and operates in open access regime, so it means that we are open for collaboration for the institutes outside, not only from Czech Republic, but also from abroad and also from the companies. What is uh, uh, typically for our center is the fact that we are trying uh, not to find some uh, a good way how to implement plasma technology in some processes, but we are also trying to do the transfer. So it means that uh, our innovation can be related to the uh, technology readiness level A from eight up to nine. 
Uh, here you can see some similar st structure of our activities that about 7% of our activities corresponds open access approach and collaboration with research and development organization and the rest about 30 currently it is collaboration with, with private sector. Uh, okay. As I told you, we are uh, dealing with the plasma technologies, so maybe most of you is familiar with this uh, this term, but I can um, very uh, simply explain that the plasma is uh, quasi-neutral gas with collective particle behavior, so it is quasi-neutral, but it is considered as a highly reactive environment, so it means that in such a plasma here in this picture, you can see very simple uh, way how plasma can be generated at a laboratory condition. It is using electric discharges. And you can see that this uh, reactive environment consists from many species. Very important role plays electrons, but also ions. Uh, so it means that these are the atoms and molecules with some charges. We can uh, determine them by the sun temperature, but also in the plasma we can find neutral atoms, gas molecules, also free radicals, uh, and also photos, photons of different um, radiation, also in a visible range, because as you know, plasma is sometimes or usually visible. There is a lot of classification of the plasma. We can make classification uh, depending on the working pressure of the gas. So we can distinguish atmospheric and low pressure plasma systems. In our center, we are focused mainly on atmospheric pressure systems because they are easy to operate and offers quite a uh, cheap way for different uh, applications. Uh, of course, the plasma, uh, because as I mentioned, we are dealing with the surface treatments, uh, should be of low temperature or in cold state. So it means that it cannot destroy the material. And also important is such a uh, non-isothermal or non-equilibrium state of the plasma, which means that the temperature of electron is much, much higher than temperature of heavier particles like ions. And such a plasma is very useful for inducing any chemical processes without destroying the material. So in our center, we are mainly working with atmospheric low pressure or cold plasma in non-equilibrium thermal state. Um, as I very briefly tried to explain, it is not so simple to generate such a plasma at atmospheric pressure, but there are several tricks how it is possible to do it. Uh, plasma can be used for the surface treatment or for different materials. Very briefly, here is listed some, some approaches. You can see that surface modification of the materials can be reached due to, due to incorporation of several uh, different polar groups. If we are generating plasma in the air, mainly there are created polar groups like carbonyl, carboxyl, hydroperoxide, or hydroxyl, also some amino groups. So the change of, of vetability is uh, related to the change of surface energy due to creation of such groups. Also, after exposure by plasma, the surface can be ready for grafting or another post treatment like hydro, like uh, like uh, grafting from liquid or gaseous environment, we can prepare hydrophobic or hydrophilic surfaces. If uh, a plasma has some special condition, we can also change the roughness and induce morphological changes, which also results in surface in uh, changes of surface properties. But this is. Also not our case because our plasma systems are usually generating very gentle plasma, which is not dangerous for the surface. Plasma we can use also, plasma we can use also for removing material from the surfaces. So here we can classify cleaning plasma etching or creating different 3D structures. And also a uh, very important application is deposition of twin layers. Uh, yeah. We could have a question, why atmospheric pressure plasma surface treatment of materials is useful? There, uh, because as you, you know, a lot of uh, treatments are done in some or by some common, uh, common ways and they usually include use of some uh, aggressive chemicals. There are 
required wet processes. So after the treatment, the drying is necessary, and this is also energy uh, consumption process. The main advantage of plasma technology is that if we use plasma for the surface treatment of material, we, uh, we can treat different materials, for example, polymers, glass, metals, wood. And uh, the treatment is done or it takes the place only in extremely thin region, about the nanom 10 nanometers. Uh, so we rank this technology between or among nanotechnologies. This treatment is usually very fast because it is uh, carried out at atmospheric pressure. So there is no any need to make some, uh, some vacuum in, uh, in your chambers or uh, vacuum systems. Potential benefits including also minimal waste and control of surface functionality. And what is a really important advantage is the fact that we can very easily control plasma treatment parameters, changing by exposure time, input power, frequency of supplying voltage, amplitude, working gas, distance between sample and plasma, and uh, the possibility of simple optimization of the process is possible thanks to their adjustment. So these are some main advantages of plasma approaches. When I am talking about atmospheric pressure plasma, of course, it is possible to find a lot of plasma systems uh, on market which generate atmospheric plasma. Some of them I uh, am illustrating on this slide, some well-known, but as you will see, or it is quite clear from this slide, that not all of these atmospheric pressure systems which generate non-thermal plasma can be uh, used efficiently in industrial applications. You can see that here are, for example, some systems uh, made by plasma treat company. As you can see, these are open air plasma system operating in ambient air. Uh, plasma seems to be, or it is uh, quite nice diffuse, but uh, if you need to treat, for example, large area samples, the problem is that it generates really limited volume of the plasma. Sometimes also the plasma has higher temperature. And if you want to treat a larger material, you, you need such a multi-system consisting of such a, such a jacks. So such a system can be fine for some 3D object treatment. Uh, another very well-known system, so-called gliding R, that is, it is possible to see at first eye that it generates really unhomogeneous plasma, filamentary plasma, and uh, also based on our own purpose uh, knowledges, I can tell that the treatment results in inhomogeneity. So it is not good for the surface treatment of the material. And uh, very famous system which is used in industry for decades, especially for the treatment of polymer films, it is volume dielectric barrier discharge, but in technical literature, it is also called industrial corona. In fact, it is volume DBD, so uh, volume DBD, uh, dielectric barrier discharge, it means that uh, it is each uh, system which consists of electrode system in which the uh, discharge area is separated from electrode at least by one dielectric. The role of dielectric is really important because due to dielectric, we can generate non-equilibrium plasma at atmospheric pressure. So the temperature of electron is much, much higher than the temperature of ions. Uh, so there are uh, different configurations of this system. This is cylindrical, very, very often used in uh, industry. As you can see, there is grounded uh, roller uh, covered with the ceramics and also discharge electrodes, another arrangement. And uh, there are produced, for example, by Softal company from Germany or Vetaphone. And they are used for the treatment of flexible material, especially the polymers, but of, of, of course, uh, with some uh, limitations. Disadvantage of this uh, uh, plasma is the, its filamentary character, inhomogeneous treatment, and also fast engine of plasma treatment. And I will explain a bit uh, uh, later, yeah? So motivating by this factor that uh, that on the market there are atmospheric pressure systems, but with quite a lot of uh, limitations. 20 years ago, in collaboration between Masaryk University and Komenius University in Bratislava, under 
uh, or in the research group of Professor Chernak, we developed new type of uh, discharge, which is called diffuse coplanar surface barrier discharge. Surface, because as you can see, plasma is generated on the surface of ceramic plate. Diffuse, because it consists of a uh, high content of diffuse plasma, so it means it is filamentary free. And uh, uh, arrangement or electrode system of this discharge is known a uh, long time, but what is tricky is the fact that we manage only due to optimization of electrode system like uh, width of uh, the strip electrodes or the thickness of the dielectric plate, also due to optimiza optimization of uh, uh, frequency of supplied voltage, we are able to generate such a nice macroscopically homogeneous plasma without any necessity to stabilize it by flowing gas or a mixture of helium or other rare gases. And this is really important for treatment of low edit materials like polymer films or, or non movens are. Uh, the dynamics of discharge is shown in this picture. You can see that at low power, when you start ignited the discharge plasma, really consists of small microfilaments. Here you can see it in the detail. Uh, as I try to explain, electrode system is created with the strip electrodes, parallel, parallel electrodes, and uh, between neighboring electrodes, there are such micro discharges. So maybe you can imagine this is one strip from up to down the neighboring strip. Between them is filamentary plasma, but what is really important, there are two areas of diffuse plasma above the electrodes. And this is really important plasma for sur surface treatment of most of the materials. If we increase the power, there is more and more micro discharges and also the uh, ratio of uh, diffuse plasma to filamentary plasma increase and starting the input power about 300 volts, we are generating such a nice homogeneous plasma. Uh, as you can see, it is not dangerous by touch uh, by human body. It's not recommended to do it, but if it happens, not, not uh, serious uh, uh, press on the hand. The trick is that the high voltage electrodes are from the opposite or from the bottom of this ceramic plate. And uh, uh, advantage of this system is also the fact that uh, electricity is not uh, affected by erosion because the plasma is not in contact with the metals. Elect uh, these metal electrodes are from the bottom side. Generative plasma has very th uh, is very thin. It has only effective, uh, effective is 0.3 millimeters. And this type of discharge, due to this very thin effective uh, thickness of plasma, has really important advantage comparing to industrial corona. Also, I uh, explain when I will be talking about one concrete uh, treatment of material. So from our point of view, we consider this discharge as economically efficient due to this fact comparing other atmospheric pressure plasma systems. Some basic properties of uh, uh, coplanar yeah. plasma are listed on this slide. Maybe most of them I mentioned. It is very thin electric uh, effective thickness. Also, uh, we generate plasma with high uh, power density. We are reaching the values about 100 watts per cubic centimeter, what is a really record value and implicates very short exposure time for most of the materials. It means several seconds for polymers, maybe about three seconds for metals or for glass. One, as I will show you, one second is sufficient. <laughs> Plasma is in non-equilibrium state, so high temperature of electron, low temperature of ions, and uh, also the system is robust. It means that it can be operated also in dusty and humid environment without any risk to overcome to, to spark or, uh, or arc, yeah? what can happen, for example, in atmospheric pressure glow discharges. It can be generated in any gas, working gas, but yeah, if it is possible, we are trying to do it in ambient air because it is the cheapest way. Uh, so this is the picture which shown you the plasma in air, in nitrogen. Typical difference between air and nitrogen is that, that diffuse areas about the electrodes of each microfilament are two times uh, bigger. Uh, and uh, 
uh, and this was maybe instead uh, this is air, this is nitrogen, this is hydrogen, maybe I wrote the, the name, this is, this is hydrogen and this is argon. Uh, and maybe one and last very important uh, feature of plasma, the most significant feature of coplanar plasma we consider diffusiveness, as I already mentioned, also based on the literature we can find in the paper from uh, Starostin from 2010 year that in his uh, paper he was written that sustaining of the filament free non thermal plasma over the large area substrate in atmospheric pressure air remains a formidable challenge within the low temperature plasma physics community. So you can uh, really see that our system is able to generate such a homogeneous diffuse plasma on quite large area because the dimension of plasma are 20 centimeters and 8 centimeters. And also based on the um, results of research group of Professor Massines from France, uh, in, for example, in these papers, uh, there was comparison between the treatment of polypropylene by diffuse volume DVD and uh, filamentary DVD, and it was confirmed that diffuse is much, much more effective for the treatment. Uh, yeah, and now I will uh, illustrate uh, several uh, concrete examples of utilization of this system. Uh, I will start with permanent hydrophilic surface treatment of lightweight polypropylene non bubens fabrics. Um, I will go a little to the history and I would like to tell you that this type of discharge was, per, was primarily de designed and developed for the treatment of non bubens. Mm -hmm. This is what we do it for. And after that, it was found out that this plasma can be used also for the treatment of. Uh, really wide range of different material, but the coplanar fulfills all requirements which are given from the producer of non bubens textile. Maybe you know that this, uh, this industry is really huge, polypropylene non bubens you can find in uh, hygiene products, baby diapers, filter medias, and for most of the application, uh, they need to have high, uh, hydrophilic surface, but in fact, it is hydrophobic. Normally, the treatment is done by chemical waste, by uh, immobilization of surfactants of the, on the surface, but there are also some efforts to use the plasma, but in fact, the plasma system in textile industry are not used so far. Maybe on some level of, of research, but really in uh, industry not. And it is because the requirements are really, really high. You need the power source which generate macroscopically homogeneous plasma without any stabilization by helium because these materials are very cheap. And additional treatment, uh, which require expensive gas, it is not, uh, it is not acceptable. Also, the speeds of production of these materials are reaching 1,000 meters per minute. So it means that you have to generate plasma of high power density to be able to at least activate the surface during the time shorter than one second. And uh, at the other, other requirements in this discharge, uh, we, we believe and we know that uh, fulfill these requirements. Only very uh, uh, simple example of the effect of the plasma. Here you can see on this graph dependence of strike to time on treatment time using such a coplanar uh, system of polypropylene non bubens strike to time only for your information it is standard method which is used by uh, or in textile industry for determining of vetability of uh, textiles you measure the time which is necessary for five millimeters of salty water to go through the, the textile so here on this uh, graph you can see the dependence uh, industry requirement when industry accepts your treatment is to have a uh, strike to time less than five seconds. Uh, these are very old results, but very na nice can indicate the effect of the treatment. You can see that we were indicate, uh, investigating the treatment at two different powers. Now we are operating at higher powers with the system, but interesting is that for the higher power, 350 watts, starting one second, you can see that strike to time is less than five seconds. Uh, reference sample, untreated sample had strike to time uh, 
uh, very, very different values. This is also shown by these white error bars. Some, some uh, uh, samples, uh, it was not possible for salty water to go through it. And, but after plasma treatment, you can see that the extracted time is really less than five seconds with very narrow error bars, which indicates homogeneous treatment because each value is representative of, uh, it is average value of 10 measurements, yeah? So if you have narrow error bars, it means that that 10 samples were uh, homogeneous treated. Uh, motivated by, yeah, no, one more graph because very often, Often uh, we have solved problem with aging effect. It's normal that after the treatment there uh, is aging effect. So after some time, the properties are getting worse. Uh, we investigate extract to time also uh, uh, during different time after the treatment. You can see one day, one week, and maybe five, five months. And you can see that even after five months, the strike time within the range of error bars is about five, five seconds. This stable plasma treatment, as I have already mentioned, is due to uh, treatment using diffuse plasma because diffuse plasma initiated cross-linking cross B for polar groups, which were created by plasma on the surface. And the mobility in this case is worse and uh, it doesn't, enable to turn these polar groups inside the volume of the material, which is theory of uh, aging effect on the polymers. Yeah. Motivated by these results, we also did a research with very, very famous, famous company in Czech Republic. The name was Pegas Company. Currently, it is called EF Non-Bubens. And this is the second largest producer of polypropylene non-Bubens in the Europe. Uh, as you can see, this is the real photo from the test from production line. Uh, we were doing the experiments at different speeds, but I present the results uh, from the experiment done at the speed 450 meters per minute. And in this case, uh, it was not permanent treatment. It was activation of uh, this textile. What means that after activation of the plasma, the textile was... Uh, immersed uh, to the solution of surfactants, but how it was uh, found out that the, it was sufficient to use the solution of a much, much uh, lower concentration of the surfactants. So here, uh, the test was done normally during the production of the material, only this part was used for the testing. And on this, uh, this, uh, this strip of textile with 8 centimeters was activated by plasma subsequently it uh, went to the keys roll where surfactants were putting on the surface and drying. And we tested, uh, we did several tests, but again, I will uh, uh, talk about the strike to time. As you can see, here uh, is dependence of strike to time on the number of uh, wash uh, washing this, uh, uh, or of gushes of these uh, samples, it means that we had one sample and we periodically measured the strike to time on the same sample. For the black line, which corresponds to the reference sample, you can see that after second gushes or a second immersing this, uh, this textile, the strike to time is higher than, uh, than uh, six seconds. And this is caused due to the fact that surfactants without plasma activation were not good bonded to the surface. There was only some physically bonds and periodically washing results in washing out effect and the surfactants were removing and the vegetability of the textile uh, got worse. For all investigation related to the plasma, yeah, at the different power, you can see 400, 600 and 500. We see the set saturation, it was measured 30 times, and in uh, there was no any case that this that strike to time was higher than five seconds. This is indication that due to plasma activation, the surfactants were firmly bonded, chemically bonded to the to the surface. So there were two advantages of the plasma activation to use the concentration of uh, or solution of lower concentration of surfactants and also good chemical bonds between, <laughs> between the surfactants. 
Uh, another possible uh, application of uh, plasma and also coplanar discharge is plasma treatment of polymer films of flexible materials. I have already mentioned the industrial corona or volume DVD. So here you can see another picture of such a system. Uh, this is uh, taken from, from uh, internet, but this is a real photo from our laboratory, again grounded electrode covered with uh, ceramics and strips electrodes plasma is burning in microfilaments perpendicularly to the to the film uh, the gap which is usually between these electrodes is one or two millimeters and this is coplanar discharge but in this case it is concave curve not flat unit uh, during the treatment of film as you can see it is pressed against the roller keeping the effective distance 0.3 millimeter and treatment is really, really efficient. You can see it here on this uh, graph. It is dependence of a water contact angle uh, on, st on storage time and for both plasma systems and exposure time was one second at same input power. You can see that after one second exposure time, water contact angle for uh, dropped from a uh, value 65 degrees in the case of Copana to the value less than 30 degrees. In the case of Corona, it is about 40. So Copana treatment was much, much more efficient. But what is really interesting is the stability of the treatment because when we measure water contact angle again after one day, you can see that water contact angle returns back to the almost reference value for uh, corona treatment but in the case of coplanar it was there was some aging effect but there was some stable value about uh, between 40 and 50 degrees uh this stable uh this uh, how to say stable treatment is again due to the diffuse uh, character of coplanar plasma and uh, regarding the uh, corona, we also observe uh, such an effect that we uh, get a very, very fast saturation in the treatment. So I'm quite sure that if you prolong exposure time to three seconds or five seconds in the corona, you are not able to uh, get better results. Yeah, it will be somewhere about this value. But in the case of the coplanar, we are able to go much, much more low with the, with the contact angle. Explanation is that, try to imagine here in this gap, there is distance two millimeters and uh, you are generating the plasma in all volume, whole volume. Our film is thin. So you are generating or we are generating active species in whole volume, but because of limited lifetime of particles, because of recombination, most of these particles cannot reach the treated material and cannot contribute to the, the treatment. This is the why we observe very fast saturation in the case of the corona. In the case of coplanar, when we close this electrode to the distance 0.3 millimeters, we generate plus very thin plasma and most active species can contribute to the treatment of the material. So this is what we also consider as the important advantage of uh, coplanar plasma. There's also some another uh, comparison I can mention more, uh, such a uh, uh, fact that, for example, in the case of coplanar treatment, there is no limitation in the thickness of treated material yet yeah, because you have surface plasma and you can place to the distance 0.3 millimeters material with any thickness. In the case of Corona, it is not possible because uh, you have gap only two, two millimeters. A larger gap means larger uh, ignitation vo voltage and a uh, much powerful supply and it is connected <laughs> with the problems. A very interesting example when the plasma also can be used is the production of uh, nanofiber membranes to enhance their water and air filtering performance properties. This was done also with one prestige project, the uh, Elite, in collaboration with Navigate Corporation company from Prague, and the role of plasma was uh, uh, on two places in the production line. Uh, maybe uh, you know electro spinning method. Uh, it means that you have um, uh, electrode, and here is the solution. And 
uh, due to the high voltage you are creating the nanofibers which are collecting on this substrate. Very often the substrate is made from, pol from polypropylene non-bulvens and the main problem is the low adhesion between this nanofibers layer and substrate. So here you can see the scheme of the process. This is carrier substrate, polypropylene non woven and we can use the plasma for pretreatment of this substrate. So here we activate the surface, which goes here to the electro spinning on nano spider machine. And due to the pretreatment, the adhesion is much, much higher. We can increase the adhesion up to 10 times. And another additional profit from plasma treatment could be in this part. If you can see it, now we have nanofibers. And in the case of uh, filters for liquids, it is required hydrophilic nature of nanofibers, and we can use again the plasma for treatment of these nanofibers. Yeah, so this is the principle and some slides uh, showing you the experiment which we done in our laboratory. We are equipped with nanospider lines. So here is the electrode for pretreatment when plasma is off and this picture shows you uh, burning plasma and activating of uh, polypropylene substrates. Here is a very simple tape peel adhesion measurement. You can see that uh, the uh, tape peel, it means that you are measuring force which is necessary to remove tape from the substrate with nanofibers. For reference sample, you can see that uh, tape can be removed very simple. B picture corresponds to two seconds coplanar treatment. Now here you can see some nanofibers on the tape, well to confirm good uh, uh, better adhesion. But what is important in this case for five seconds treatment, the adhesion was uh, so strong between the nanofibers and substrate that substrate starts to tear, yeah, in, the, in this case. Uh, this is the look inside the nanospider machine. So here in this area, the nanofibers are creating. So this is the polypropylene non ones at sub carry substrate, and here are creating the nanofibers. And this is the uh, part for post-treatment. So it means that uh, here, on this picture, we have substrate with nanofibers, and now this concave electrode is closed, and here in closed distance is exposed to the to the nanofibers to make them more hydrophilic. We tested also this technology at uh, manufacturing line in collaboration with Navigate company. So this is the photo of their line in the factory. Again, in the uh, like in the uh, case of pre non movements, we uh, installed two plasma units uh, before nano before electro spinning. Uh, two was sufficient to pretreat efficiently the substrates because maybe I should mention that the typical speed for this process are much much slower depending on the thickness of nanofibers you require is several centimeters per minute. So two electrodes are quite sufficient. And this is the look on the part for the post-treatment when we were trying to make these nanofibers uh, more hydrophilic for, uh, for filter media for the, for the liquids. These are, for example, examples which we prepare, but this is also nice uh, <laughs> photo which show you how is uh, how higher is adhesion on this part which was plasma treated yes so this part corresponds to the plasma treated substrate and you can see that nanofibers are very good attached to the surface and this is untreated and very simple touching by hand results in uh, removing the nanofibers from uh, from the substrate also, when we tested in collaboration with uh, navigate flux capac capacity, so it means some uh, properties for filtering. There were, there were measurement of uh, water which go through such a filtration membrane. Uh, blue and yellow lines corresponds to the plasma treatment. Blue, it is plasma treatment after three weeks. Uh, and uh, yellow is immediately after the treatment, and this is without plasma treatment immediately on the same day and after three weeks. What is interesting, 
is that, as you can see, for one liter or 1,000 grams of water, in the case of plasma treatment, you need it 300 uh, seconds for one liter of water to go through the, this membrane. In the case uh, without any plasma treatment, it was two times uh, longer, right? it's about 600. So it uh, really corresponds to uh, the, the better hydro, uh, hydrophilic character of, this, <laughs> of these materials. A very interesting topic which we are currently dealing is also plasma treatment of fabrics to enhance the mechanical parameters of uh, fiber reinforced uh, polymer composites. Yeah, we are working with natural fibers and also glass fibers. I will show you some slides related to flux fibers. So here you can see the scanning electron microscopy picture of some reference sample. What is really crucial uh, for good composites, it is fiber metric interface in good, of good properties, and also uh, moisture content in fibers influence the quality of composites very much. <laughs> what we expect from the plasma treatment, it is improved surface adhesion, also to dry the fibers and homogenize surface properties of flux fibers. Again, very simple graph for dependence of water contact angle on the treatment time. Uh, um, water contact angle was measured immediately after treatment, one day, one week later, and one month later uh, for exposure, short exposure time. As I try to explain, only one second, three seconds, or 10 seconds. You can see that uh, in these cases, one and three exposure time, there is no serious aging effect. Yeah, maybe within the error bars. In the case of 10 uh, seconds exposure time, we were able to decrease much more water contact angle, yeah, comparing these, uh, these values. And uh, of course, there was also more significant aging effect, but it is uh, after one month still less than, than in the case of one or three seconds <laughs> treatment. <laughs> uh, also, we compared the treatment with corona system in row to row arrangement, the same as I showed you in the case of the polymer films and our row to row coplanar discharge. And, and uh, the measure strike to time, similarly as on poly, uh, polypropylene non movements. And all, again, you can see the effect of, uh, of uh, plasma treatment. Before plasma treatment, uh, for flux fibers of textile, the strike to time was longer than, than two minutes. What is important for composites, there are mechanical properties. Uh, as you can see, plasma treatment significantly improved the adhesive bonds at flux fibers and matrix interface. It was confirmed by measurement tape peel test under 180 degrees. This is the, how to say, dependence, dependence of force on, uh, on distance of this, of this uh, removing the tape and you can see some mean, mean, mean force. In this table, uh, you can see the increase of mean force for all plasma treated, uh, treated composite materials, yeah? uh, or plasma treated flux fibers, which were used for composite materials. Uh, so really plasma treatment improved this, this adhesion. Uh, okay. Um, these are some uh, scanning electron microscope uh, pictures. Uh, reference fibers uh, are easily peeled off from the matrix in this composite without any damages or breaks. So also illustrates lower adhesion. In the case of the plasma treatment, coplanar and also corona for different exposure time, you can see that after treatment, the outer layers of fibers are significantly destroyed, which is caused by the stronger interfacial force between flex fibers and, and matrix. We are also uh, working with glass composites in close collaboration also currently with Institute for this Aircraft Design at the University in Stuttgart in Germany. Uh, because uh, we see the, this potential also in uh, aircraft <laughs> industry. <laughs> we published uh, another uh, uh, technology which uh, should be mentioned, 
was several times published in collaboration with uh, Comenius University. There is a lot of papers dealing with the plasma-assisted calcination of inorganic nanofibers. It is really interesting applications. As I have already mentioned, electrospinning is a method for preparing nanofibers from solution. Uh, so here is the scheme of this process. You will have to prepare the solution, which composed from base polymer. Uh, different types of polymer can be used, precursor and additives. After that, there is electrospinning. But uh, for after electrospinning, when you create the nanofibers, <laughs> it is necessary to remove the base polymer uh, from 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 uh, substrate. This is normally done by thermal calcination, which uh, takes a very long time because it is necessary to increase the temperature step by step very slowly. Uh, it normally, uh, in total, it takes uh, up to 10 hours and it is done at really high temperatures, yeah, reaching 100 uh, degrees. And we try to replace this thermal calcination by plasma treatment. And it was confirmed that we are able to remove very efficiently base polymer uh, after 10 second, 10 second exposure time in Copana discharge only in ambient air. If we investigated oxygen, it was also possible to, to uh, obtain uh, the same results, but the structure of, uh, of nanofibers was destroyed. So the oxygen was not so good, uh, good uh, working gas. There are the possible to prepare different type of ceramic fibers. If somebody is interesting, uh, there is a lot of papers from our group and also from Communist University on this topic. These nanofibers can be used in solar cells, fuel cells as uh, implants and different, different areas. Here you can see the typical scanning electron microscopy spectra of such prepared nanofibers using different base polymer, PV, uh, polyvinyl pyrrolyl, vinyl, P, uh, polyvinyl acetate, and PAN. And what is interesting, uh, some uh, base polymer uh, respond uh, really different to the, to, the, to the effect of the plasma. For example, stability of this PAN based polymer led to formation of composite fibers with polymer core, yeah? and ceramic shell. It was really, really interesting that uh, we prepared flexible nanofibers due to this polymer core, but with the properties of nanofibers due to that shell. shell. Also, uh, it was published in this, in this, in this paper. Uh, another interesting and uh, applications are a little different is the application in the area of fabrica fabrication of safety laminated glasses. This was the project which we saw in collaboration, in fact, with three companies. One was uh, from Germany, Poatern, and also companies from Czech Republic. As you can see, laminated glasses can found, find different application, can be used in civil engineering. And uh, in fact, laminated glass are, uh, or is produced by lay layering two and often more glass plates between which a safety foil, so-called interlayer, is placed. So here you can see the cross section. You have two, two glass sides and polymer. Also, this is soda lean floor glass. So it means that one side is so-called thin side and the other is air side. It really affects the quality of, uh, of laminated glasses. Uh, the role of plasma in this case is to help or, or to enhance the mechanical properties of such laminated glasses. Uh, for several decades, as an interlayer, so-called polyvinyl butyral or PVB films have been the most commonly used interlayer in uh, laminated safety glasses for common design. Uh, due to the simplicity of lamination, good safety after breakage and low cost, but Currently, uh, there are trends in some application of civil engineering replace this PVB uh, interlayer by new generation of the polymer, so-called Yonoplast for Senti glass. This is photo how, uh, how this uh, film uh, looks like. 
And uh, the main advantage is that this, uh, the, the laminated glass is prepared from this, this uh, century glass, have several times higher strength, up to 100 times, comparing to, to PVB. Uh, but what is disadvantage is the fact that uh, the air side of flowed glass must be um, covered or for, for laminating must be used some primer yeah, to, to use this century glass. On thin side, it is quite okay, but air side is problem. And main problem is when you have to prepare multi-layer laminated glasses because in this case, the plate which is in the middle both sides, thin and other side, must be used. So here you can see the primer, which is normally used for the air side of the glass. So this way it is putting on the on the on the surface, and we were investigating to replace this primer by plasma technology. As you uh, saw, the coponent discharge generates large area plasma with the possibility to scale it up. It was very simple. So this is a look at the uh, laminated safety class production line, and there is really good place where the plasma can be installed and we also really tested this, because normally when you have such a line, here is the place for your large area glass plate, this is washing the machine, and after that it is placed here. If we install our plasma system somewhere here, we are able to clean the surfaces by plasma or activate it for better adhesion. Uh, we did this and tested in the industry, so we were preparing the large area glasses with a width one meter. From this reason, we used five plasma units in this arrangement, because as I already mentioned, each electrode generates plasma with the length 20 centimeters, so all together enables to generate one meter. This is a testing table. With, uh, on which the uh, glass plates were moved. And here is the holder of our electrodes. Oh, uh, yeah. This is also the movie, which could, if it works. Yeah, you can see the real movie from such a line uh, in this movie. Uh, we were treating the large area glass with a dimension half meter and half meter using three plasma units. So there was some automatic belt system, moving system, which is uh, moving with this uh, glass plate in a defined distance, 0 0.3 millimeters from the <laughs> keramics of uh, Coplana discharge. And after such activation, this glass was used with the other treated glass for preparing safety, uh, uh, laminated safety glasses. So, uh, um, we did, uh, oh, maybe I would like to tell that I present some, re some results, but in fact, all application or all research I was talking about uh, has also some own background and scientific study. Eh? So we are investigating not only such a, uh, maybe more simple or standard test, but also we are studying the process which are responsible for the for the treatment using XPS, using uh, atomics for microscopy, and such a system. But these are standard <laughs> tests which are used in the industry of laminated safety glasses. So we were testing laminated glasses prepared from different interliers, PVB, EVA, Centri glass. And uh, the method, the test which we uh, investigated were, were four point bending tests, it is here, drop ball test, uh, pendulum test in this case, and also stability test. So we investigated the effect of temperature, humidity, and UV light. Uh, results of bending tests were really interesting, as you can see in this table, without any treatment, maximum. A maximum force uh, which uh, results in breaking the laminated glass was uh, 650 newtons. In the case of laminated glass, which was da prepared from plasma activated glasses, it was 950. And we also treated polymer film, PVB, not only glass, but also PVB. And in such a case, the, the, uh, the force was 
1,000 newtons. It's about 60% increase in this force. So really, really uh, significant uh, improvement. These are results of drop ball test. So we were testing the effect of uh, drop ball test of iron ball from the height of four meters on the samples with dimensions of a half a millimeter. As you can see, after this test for laminated glass prepared without any plasma treatment, it was broken, but it passed this test because uh, what is sufficient is the fact that these parts stayed on the field, uh, on the, in the glass, yeah? they were not flying away. When we treated only plates without interlayer, the result was like this, but what was really impressive also for us, and we have also the movie, in the case of laminated glass, which was prepared from plasma-treated glass and plasma-treated uh, PVB, there were no any cracks. After fall, this uh, one kilog kilogram heavy ball from four meters height. So, so the effect of plasma treatment was really, really uh, significant. This is the results, or these are the results of pendulum test. Also, uh, uh, for as you can see, these two two samples uh, failed the test because uh, it was such a broken. But after the plasma treatment, it was not possible to get to the other side with testing ball. So the plasma also helped uh, help uh, to increase the mechanical property of these uh, laminated glasses. Here it is better see maybe on this this picture. These are without primer application, yeah, on the air side of glass, and this is without primer but uh, replaced or su substituted by plasma treatment. Uh, regarding the glass, I can very briefly mention also the possibility to treat also flexible glass because, as I told you, we have a lot of systems. So we managed to treat ultra thin flexible glass before, for example, deposition of conductive layers. Plasma, non equilibrium or non thermal plasma can be used for dry cleaning and activation of such ultra thin glasses implemented in your road raw system. And as it was found out, one second, really short exposure time, one second plasma treatment time proved efficient uh, for treatment of this ultra thin flexible glass, prior pedot spin and spray coating. We were testing this pedot uh, coating, which is used for production of solar cells. Also, the effect of plasma can be seen on this, uh, these images, where in the case of plasma treatment, there is uh, the layer is homogeneous on the surface. Uh, the layer was prepared by, by spin coating technology, but also by spraying. What is interesting when we measure sheet resistance, the lowest, as you can see, sheet resistance were measured on the layers treated one second against very short treatment time. These lines correspond to different uh, speeds, rotation during the uh, spin coating, but uh, as you can see, uh, the, the lowest value at uh, Speed 2000 rotations per minute was the, was the lowest. Um, okay, very, very nice. Uh, it can be uh, seen also from this picture. This is not uh, spray uh, co spin coating, but this coating were prepared by spray coating. And again, you can see the comparison between the plasma treatment by coplanar and industrial corona or volume DVD. It is possible to see by Naked eye that for samples which were was not treated, the spray was spraying was not possible because you see the droplets of the of the solution and uh, the plasma treatment was uh, helpful yeah, for for better prepare for preparing of better better coating. Yeah, and may, and last very interesting <laughs> application what I would like to mention and really really. Hot topic in our center, it is, uh, let's uh, call it mild and low cost and scalable plasma triggered reduction exfoliation of 3D graphene oxide. In fact, we are able to start reduction of graphene oxide only by impulse of the plasma 
very fast and this reduction is shorter than one second. So from the flakes of graphene oxide, which are diluted in the water, we are able to prepare graphene oxide uh, samples, including some tricks, also graphene oxide aerogel. And when we uh, expose this material to the plasma of propanoid discharge, we initiate very fast reduction. So you can see that uh, uh, due to time shorter than one second, we can prepare reduced graphene oxide, oxide gate. Uh, the theory which we try to explain uh, is based also on something like domino theory, and it was published in this paper, if somebody is interesting. But I can show you in this real movie how fast this reduction can be. So here you can see graphene oxide samples. So it is samples which were prepared from flakes in solution. And after, after touching with the plasma of special condition, yeah, uh, we can start such a, such a fast reduction and we can prepare a reduced graphene oxide instead of common time, uh, time uh, consuming uh, chemical, chemical base. We investigated also, as I mentioned, can composition using uh, XPS analysis, as you can see very briefly from the spectra for the reduced graphene oxide uh, samples, we observe degrees of oxygen containing uh, groups. And uh, uh, th this is also a very nice test, as you can see, he, here is graphene oxide, it is not conductive. And after reduction using the plasma, we are preparing the reduced graphene oxide with much, much higher conductivity, which is um, showing by uh, lighting uh, of this of this diode. Yeah? So the, the conductivity is very, very good. What we see as a potential is also preparing not only sheet, gra reduced graphene oxide sheet, but also re reduced graphene oxide aerogel with high because it is high porous materials with, uh, uh, with high surface uh, uh, with high, uh, surface. And uh, yeah, another another movie which also show, but it is uh, in, so, uh, in a slower motion, yeah, how how it works. yeah. So this is the reduction process which we are able to start by plasma. This, te this technology is protected by patent and we are looking for, for possible application. We are in contact with several companies, but the communication is not so simple. And we believe that uh, it would be possible to use this technology for many applications. So far, what is promising is using of this graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, let's, uh, uh, let's tell composite based membranes for water filtration. Such a, such a membranes contains from polypropylene substrates, uh, nanofibers prepared by electrospinning, graphene oxide, and reduced graphene oxide and again the same layers, and we tested in collaboration on the sorption against pesticides, antibiotics, analgesics, and as you can see, sorption in persons is uh, quite, quite good, depending on the passes of the tested uh, solution through the, through the membranes. Other possible uh, applications which we see is maybe aircraft industry, because maybe this technology could be used for preparing some special parts of uh, planes to remove the charge which is creating uh, during the flight of, of plane or uh, many, many other applications like supercapacitors and uh, so on. And at the end of my uh, presentation, uh, it is not possible to mention everything, but uh, there are a lot of topics which we are dealing with. Uh, very interesting is the plasma-assisted low temperature curing of polycyzelan coating. It means that we are using plasma for curing of coating, which is prepared, let's say, by, by spin coating or ultrasonic spray coating method. In this case, uh, it was uh, uh, shown that very effective is the plasma, which is generated in water vapor. Uh, uh, yes, uh, in the area of uh, bio application, we are 
collaborating with uh, with some partners in the area of electrospano nanofibers, which can be used as a drug delivery substrate, which are assisted by the atmospheric plasma. We are able to prepare very good nanofibers of PHB polymer due to the plasma treatment of PHB powder before electrospinning. We are testing such materials as a substrate for, wo for wooden healing of intense time and lungs. Another challenge is to have better adhesion of the substrate to intense time, and we believe that we can achieve it by the plasma activation. Also, we have already started some tests. Uh, what is really interesting, maybe in uh, less than one month, we will submit patent applications protecting the new type of plasma discharge, which is based on the coplanar discharge, but, uh, but enables to treat the materials in a remote mode. So it means it will be fine for the treatment of some structure surfaces or surfaces which are rough. Uh, yeah, we continue in the treatment uh, of glass and investigations of reliability or adhesive bonding. And uh, uh, what is interesting also is purification of water from antibiotics, and we are using photocatalytic and plasma processes. But uh, very, we are very interesting is plasma treatment of plant seeds, which can be used for improving their germination across parameters. And uh, we use also the plasma for the contamination process. Uh, I was talking mainly about the activity of our group, which is involved in the Central Sea Plan, but of course, we have a very active group uh, in Central Sea Plan, which is working in the area of plasma diagnostics and modeling. So it means that in collaboration with our colleagues, we are able to study or to do the diagnostic of plasma, of plasma, of our new plasma systems. And also we have a group who is working or in the area of deposition of thin layers and nanostructures. They are using different technologies, PVD, HIPIMS, or plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. So they are using magnetron, magnetron sputtering. Uh, maybe I told her. everything, but at the end, I would like to give emphasis on the fact that uh, most of our plasma technologies which we try to transfer to the industry are based on coplanar discharge, as I tried to explain, because we believe this technology and this discharge really can compete with other atmospheric pressure plasma systems and also due to its uh, possibility for very simple scale. Here you can see the plasma titre in our laboratory which enables to, treat, to generate plasma with the dimensions one meter and a half a meter. Yes? So if somebody comes and wants to treat, I don't know, textile with, with one meter, we can do it this way. This plasma area consists from five segments. Each is independent on the other, so we can be run on five electrodes. We can be operating at, um, I don't know, another supplying voltage frequency and the other end to study the effect of the, of the plasma. As I mentioned, we try to do some uh, transfer. From this uh, reason, we have also uh, a, a spin-off company, which is associated with Masaryk University. The name of this company is Roplas. So all plasma system and technologies which are developed at the center C plan and protected somehow patent or, or utility model uh, Roplas usually make commercialization of it based on the licenses. These are some typical systems uh, generating of coplanar discharge. Here you can see this uh, the system with two planar electrodes, this fully automatic system which can operate um, automatically. Yeah? What you have to do is to start it and to adjust the part that you want. We have several rotoral systems, as I shown you, but also small systems, which are very good for some trials or for some testing, testing if somebody, some company or some customer want to test if this technology works on their material or for their purposes, they can uh, rent or buy such a small systems. 
uh, they have the same, plasma has the same properties, but it's much, much smaller. Here, here you can see the so-called plasma gun, which enables or generate plasma five centimeters, two centimeters, but it is usually sufficient if you want to study some effect on the surface using XPS or scanning electron microscopy lens. And of course, every, uh, all of what I was presented was a work of a team of the people from the C plan. So uh, this is the C plan. In the middle, you can see uh, Professor Chernak, who is still director on this center. And also, you can see Jakub, who is here in the audience. And, uh, and uh, I would like to express the my thanks and uh, gratitude to the people which are listed here, which were involved uh, mainly in the project I was talking about. Also, some of our uh, industrial partners. And that's all. And I would like to thank for so much. Thank you very Question the audience here. Oh, we have two questions. Uh, I am uh, 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 So, Naya? Uh, I, I don't understand why you say the corona is not the the What was the Okay, because as I maybe I can go to the slide, uh, corona discharge generate uh, generate filamentary plasma. Yeah, so it means that there are something like channels, and uh, oh, somewhere. yeah, here you can see uh, volume DBD. It means that the plasma is burning in volume between electrodes, so between grounded roller and this strips electrode. You can, here you can see that filaments, yeah? And uh, uh, for example, you cannot use such a plasma for the treatment of textile, for example, because the textile is destroyed. It is sensitive and you can see the holes inside, yeah? Because microfilaments are perpendicular, so it is well known that corona cannot be used because you can create pinhole. In the case of films, it can be used, but in fact, there is mainly only filamentary plasma. So it means that it's only channel without such a nice uh, diffuse plasma like it is on this micro discharge. Yeah? Here you can see, this is the filament. These are two areas of diffuse plasma okay, in the corona. This is at low power. If I increase the power, there is more such micro discharges. And this is the state at the high power. So you have mainly diffuse plasma. Yeah, and diffuse plasma, as it is also mentioned in the literature, I, and I gave an example of uh, papers from team of Professor Massinez, diffuse plasma can induce cross-link. Yeah, so it means when you create due to plasma treatment polar groups on the polymers, yeah, polar, carbonyl, carboxylic, after some time, they have tendency to turn inside the material. And this is aging, yeah? When you make cross-linking between them, the mobility is not so good and they cannot so simply move inside the material. So if diffuse plasma initiate cross-linking, aging should be slower. And the cross-linking can be initiated by diffuse plasma. In coplanar plasma, there is diffuse plasma. In, in uh, corona, there is very, very less such a plasma. So this is the explanation why the treatment of uh, by, by coplanar is more stable, if you understood it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Diffuse plasma, it means nice plasma without visible filament and something like that. Such a plasma, you can generate very simple at low pressure, yeah? If you have chamber and low pressure and you have window and you have a look inside, you can see nice, nice plasma in all volume. If you increase the pressure, such a nice diffuse plasma has tendency to go to the filamentary plasma. This is main disadvantage, and uh, this is not so good for the for the for the treatment. Yeah, and we are able using the coplanar to generate 
we call it macroscopically homogeneous, yeah, because there are microfilaments, but at high input power, less microfilaments that that areas could diffuse plasma. Okay. My first question is more Yes. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, I didn't mention it in detail, but uh, yeah, strike to time standard method, according the norm. Salty water. Uh, the solution causes from nine grams of NaCl for one liter of distilled water, and it is something like physiological uh, solution. Yeah, so it uh, it means that uh, it uh, should be similar to physiological solution. And another effect is that for measuring, the principle of measuring is that you have filter papers. You place your sample on it, and you put such a plastic, how to say, a panel with the holes, and there are two electrodes connected to the stopwatches. And when you put there that salty water, it is conductive, so it means that there is electrical circle between stopwatches and uh, and that hole where it is salty water. And when all salty water went through the through the textile to the filter papers. Circle is uh, this uh, is switched off and stopwatches uh, are not counting the time. So so there are two reasons. One, according to the norm, it should be similar solution to physiological liquid or solution, and the other is, from my point of view, technical. That uh, this is way how we measure that time. That if you have hole and bottom are two electrodes. If, if there is still salty water, the circle is closed and you are measuring the time immediately and it uh, goes all through the through the textile east. It is switched off. And this is standard method which is normally 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 used in the industry. It, it is uh, <laughs> you know when you you are talking to company this is what they are interesting mainly for uh, in here. If we are talking maybe, yeah, we can 3D or, uh, your sample and scanning electron microscopy is like this and we can create such a polar group. The question is, okay, and what is the strike to time? Because this is what uh, is interesting for us. Uh, I have a second question. Yeah. Your yeah, it is uh, here from that company. Yes, and then you mentioned that the other thing is 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 that the other we didn't publish this result. This is uh, because, as I mentioned during the lunch, that uh, we were not allowed to uh, maybe to talk about the technology because there was that, the patent. But there were some reports. I don't remember now very exactly which test or analysis were done, but I remember that conclusion about the chemical bonds. I don't know if some, <laughs> what I know, Experience and such a method they were done for sure, but uh, I don't really remember now really exactly what was the result because these are I don't know Jakob results maybe fifteen years old well I don't know <clears throat> yeah but I would like to present it from that reason that uh, as I mentioned this discharge was uh, designed for surface return of textile. And in this area, we did not succeed. Yeah, we would like to find the partners or some company who will be interesting in this technology because we we, we really uh, see the potential. And as I mentioned during the lunch, you can see also see that aerodynamic shape of uh, arrangement of the of the electrodes. So 
so about that uh, evidence of chemical bonds maybe i it's not problem to have a look to the to the report but i don't know how some experience it was done for sure but i don't remember exactly the result uh, it depends, uh, I don't know, on the application, really, two seconds, with glass, maybe, or yeah. maybe somewhere, yeah? yeah. Uh, maybe it was with flexible glass. Uh, you know, if we are talking, for example, about maybe flexible, I can explain here, maybe. You can see a rotoroll system. Yeah, so here is a roller. Normally, in laboratory scale, we place the samples on this roller. There is defined speed, yeah? And we know that in the direction of uh, rotation movement of this roller, we have, act we have active plasma with eight centimeters. So we can calculate very simple the speed of roller, which, corre uh, which corresponds to seconds treatment. So you place your sample somewhere here, away from the plasma. Yeah. In fact, during the treatment, this is nearer, this is closed, yeah? but you have sample somewhere here. Your roller is moving with defined speed, and this speed corresponds to the surface treatment. Yeah? So we are able to, to adjust the speed of roller, and we know how this. Very often we do the treatment such a way that our speed corresponds to one second treatment. And if you want to have five seconds, you are keeping it for five for us. Yeah? But also it is different as you are treating five seconds by slowly. Yeah? Because in five, uh, um, how to say, uh, periodical treatment, your samples in plasma, out of the plasma. Yeah? And then can be some chemical process again in the plasma. And, and it depends on the approach. And in other system which uh, have some movement, it is similar. We know the if we have one electrode, the active uh, dimensions of plasma is eight centimeters. If we have two, it is sixteen, and we can calculate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what does it mean, robust? Is it no, the question? No. The question is, we can work with different uh, humidity, yes. gas, and bio. The fundamental question that I have is, how different humid environment, as well as that environment, will affect the creation of this filament that you imagine dish on the surface? We are supposed to break this study the physical regime and uh, how this can be affected by the condition. What we know based on our experiences, maybe dusty environment is not so dangerous for the plasma, how to say it is quite homogeneous. This is also the reason <clears throat> why we can normally treat plant seeds for a long exposure time. What is maybe more uh, not dangerous but not so good is maybe condensation of humidity if can occur on the electrodes because immediately if you have any liquid or maybe maybe some water spot or something on the ceramics the plasma is not burning there till it is evaporated yeah so so um, <clears throat> from this uh, point of view maybe only that the humidity is a uh, higher problem but uh, i have to tell that uh, at conditions at which we were using the system, we <clears throat> didn't solve such a problem. Mm -hmm. we, we are able, <clears throat> for example, special reactors generate coplanar plasma in pure water vapor. Yeah, we have such a reactor. So it means that it is, there is real uh, water vapor, but everything is heated, including plasma units to the temperatures higher than 100 degrees to prevent condensation. Yeah, but my question was more if yeah. we focus on the, on the 
break it down for us. It's ah, okay. Well, that's the, this kind of microscopic image which is the presence of uh, dust or the presence of humidity affect uh, the physical regime in a way that we can observe it from On the emissions spectroscopy or eventually. I think that uh, not a, a bot can influence are maybe some conductive particles, um, maybe some conductive dust or something like that, because uh, in a, such a case there is parasitic maybe how to say filamentary plasma, but uh, non-conductive maybe maybe maybe. And in general, power there to be something that you mm -hmm. highlight a lot of time, the fact that you can reach one hundred one or something. Um, if we want to work with lower power density, mm -hmm. do we need to rethink completely the design of the electrode, or is this a question of uh, frequency and power? This density? is a question of frequency, but currently we are operating the system at the frequencies in resonance about 15 kilohertz. And starting the input power, because we are simply measuring input power, starting the power 300 watts, we have a nicely homogeneous plasma. So we can calculate what is the power density for this value. I don't know it now, but uh, it is simple. We have 20 centimeters, 8 centimeters, and effective fitting 0 0.3 millimeters. So we can calculate it. So uh, if we need another power density, it can be obtained in the range from 300 to 400 watts, keeping the homogeneous plasma. If we need higher power density, because uh, in the case of that treatment in Pegas, I showed the results at higher power, 600, 700 watts, it can be also obtained by, uh, by uh, uh, increasing the frequency of supplying voltage, because, uh, you know, the system, our system has some limitations. So it means that we cannot increase the power only due to increase of amplitude of the voltage because there is some technical limit, mm -hmm. but we can do it by higher frequency. So if we change the resonance frequency from 15 to 30, for example, kilohertz, we can go with the power up to 700 watts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the power density is higher in, in, in such a case. We have such a power supplies normally. What is uh, also interesting to mention is that higher power results in more filamentary plasma. It is still, uh, how to say, macroscopic homogeneous, but filaments are more visible and also warmer. But uh, it was not a problem to use it in that industrial test in Pegas company because textile was running very fast. Yeah, it was, uh, I don't know, 450 minutes, meters per minute. So it was not dangerous for the textile. And uh, what we also have so far tested were even higher power at 50 kilohertz, but it is really warmer, warmer plasma. So I don't know, maybe if we are testing, uh, some some such a treatment at the really high speeds it could be used. I don't I don't know. And due to higher power density, we should be able to activate the surface even at higher speed of the material. Okay. You're welcome. Do we have any additional questions? One last question. Okay, it's not a Thank you. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for being here. Um, if you have any questions.